Welcome to Discussion. Today we're talking about Aqua. She's one of my favorite characters in all of Kingdom Hearts, and I think even Sora has a hard time reaching the heights of heroism that she does. Now, I have plenty of reasons to love Aqua. Her look is really rad, her first Keyblade is one of my favorites, she's a magic user which is always my jam in Kingdom Hearts games, even though magic's not all that great usually, and she's voiced by Willa Holland, an actor from the OC and Arrow, two of my favorite shows. Now, while all perfectly valid things, they're all kind of superficial. This is where we talk about the deeper aspects of the story, and Aqua actually has a really interesting story arc that's really different from the other two in the game. Aqua's quest is inherently less glamorous than Terra and Ven's, because they have direct foils in Xehanort and Vanitas. Aqua's chasing her friends, trying to keep them together like we've talked about before. Because of this, during the first part of the game, it does sometimes feel like she's getting the shaft, but then we enter the final chapter of the story. Let's talk a bit about how the battle at the Keyblade Graveyard plays out for Aqua. She saves Terra and Ventus' lives during their fight with Xehanort and Vanitas, then she fights off Brig who's been powered up by Xehanort. Next she has to fight Ventus using the Keyblade. And even though Ventus is on the inside fighting and Mickey's on the outside fighting with her too, it's still the most powerful weapon in the Kingdom Hearts universe and Aqua's going toe to toe with it. Then after she succeeds and everything explodes, she has to get Ventus to safety. Then she has the duty of fighting Terra who's now Xehanort. And after she defeats him, she saves him from falling into the realm of darkness by sacrificing herself so she'll fall in instead. After the first part of her story feeling a little anticlimactic, the end of the game gives Aqua real time to shine. Now, there's a clear theme running through all of this. Everything Aqua does, she does in defense of her friends. She's constantly saving them and protecting them, never considering the danger she puts herself in for a second. Terra and Ventus have their flashy battles, but Aqua has the gravest role in the game, and perhaps all of Kingdom Hearts. She has to shoulder the burdens of her friends, to bear the aftermath of their battle at the Keyblade Graveyard. Imagine what a sad, lonely journey it is for Aqua at the end, carrying Ventus on her back. She has to bring him somewhere safe, and in the process, witnesses how her home has been destroyed, and her master has been killed. The ending of the game slowly rips everything away from Aqua. Her master is gone, her home is destroyed, and she doesn't know if she's ever going to see her friends again. And when she does find Terra, he's been taken over by Xehanort. But even knowing this, she can't bear to lose anyone else. It's impossible to overstate the gravity of the sacrifice Aqua makes when she allows herself to fall into the realm of darkness to save Terra. Because she gives her keyblade and armor to Terra to get him back, there's really no reason to think that she's going to be able to get out. And yet again, Aqua doesn't hesitate. She puts Terra before herself without a moment's notice. The bravery pure instinct for her. And where does she end up? In the realm of darkness, with no end in sight, and an endless number of Heartless who suddenly have a gourmet meal for them. And I don't mind telling you that we're not going to hear from Aqua again until she's already been there for 12 years. Though we don't know what it's like there for her past what the game shows us, I think we can assume it's not pleasant. And yet, Aqua doesn't regret her actions for even a moment. She loses her hope at one point and resigns herself to death. But Terra and Ventus, even lost as they are, won't let the one who saved them go down so easily. They remind her that she has something to fight for, and she's able to go on for even the smallest chance that she might see them again. Aqua is defined by her dedication to others, and is willing to move heaven and earth to defend what's precious to her. Of course, even she has no way of knowing the consequences of her actions. By saving Terra, she's actually ensuring that Xehanort's plans will come to fruition, since he ends up the dominant personality. In a way, her actions at the end of the game set in motion all the terrible things that are going to happen in the rest of the series. However, Aqua has also touched two other lives, those of Sora and Kairi. She's passed her will to protect what's close to her to Sora, and her strength to Kairi. Birth by Sleep is a generational story. The struggles of one generation get passed on to the next. Sora, Riku, and Kairi inherit the burdens that Ventus, Terra, and Aqua couldn't resolve. But at the same time, they're a second chance for them. Sora and Kairi are going to help to do what Aqua couldn't, and carry on her mission. So, we've established that Aqua has a unique role in the story, and that she shows her strength in a different way from the others. Let's talk about another aspect of her character. Aqua is currently the only playable female character in the Kingdom Hearts series. Xion and Larxene can be played in the multiplayer mode with 358 over 2 days, but Aqua is a part of the main story, a focus. This is important because Aqua is not only a playable female hero, but an exceptional one at that. Now, this issue could have a dozen videos by itself, so we have to talk in generalities a little bit more than I'd like. Now, it's very rare that action games have female lead characters. Go ahead, see how many you can think of off the top of your head. There's definitely examples, we've got Tomb Raider, Bayonetta, Beyond Two Souls. I'm sure you can think of a good number, but in comparison to the alternative, it's really not that many. But beyond the quantity, we want to look at the quality of the female characters that are usually in these games. Usually, if they are female fighters in an action game, they are a companion character or a villain, and the role in the story is limited. And, in an overwhelming majority of games, they fall into one of two tropes, the damsel in distress or the femme fatale. A femme fatale is a seductive, mysterious woman who pulls the protagonist along his journey. That's what companion characters in games tend to do. 
They're plot devices, and even if they fight, it's still in the shadow of the main character. But even when they do take a more central stage, female characters in games are very often designed by men specifically to appeal to other men to get them to buy the games, because it's just a fact that sex sells. Aqua's outfit doesn't cover her whole body, but it's not flaunting it either. She's not gyrating on screen for our amusement. In fact, Aqua doesn't have a romantic interest at all during the story, which itself is unusual. Now, I want to be really clear, I don't believe in bad tropes. Any character can be fleshed out and well written, regardless of their place in the story. Damsels can be strong, interesting characters. One of my favorite examples is Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. And femme fatales can be open with their sexuality but still multifaceted. Emma Frost from the X-Men is a character whose sexuality feels empowering and organic, a real part of her character rather than a cheap ploy. The problem occurs when these are the only roles that females in games are allowed to fill. When these kinds of characters are ubiquitous, it sends a message that that's all that's expected of women. It devalues them and is just plain unrealistic and really leads to bad writing. If women can only be objects to be one or seductive background characters, we're missing out on a huge spectrum of human experience and personality. This is what makes Aqua unique. She's not a sex object or a typical male badass shoved into a female body for show. She's a real fleshed out character. She's feminine without being depicted as weak, strong without feeling like she's pandering. Aqua is compassionate and caring. She makes mistakes, feels regret, and worries about the future. At the same time though, she's in control of her own destiny. She fights her own battles, drives her own story. Even though her character arc is based around following Terra and Ventus and trying to keep them safe, it doesn't feel like she's an ancillary character or companion, it's just part of who she is. Her role in the main game isn't quite as flashy at first, but it's rectified in the end where she gets her own extra segment to shine. So why is this important? Why does it matter? It's important because Aqua's a rare example of a truly exemplary playable female character in a video game. She's an excellent role model, and if you're not a girl who grew up playing games, it may be difficult to understand why that's important. If you're male, you have basically the entire main cast of gaming to choose our models from. But for girls, it's a lot more difficult to find someone to truly relate to. And statistically, half of gamers are female. 48%, and they're being represented an incredibly small amount of the time. And when they are, it's often poorly thought out or outright offensive. It may not seem like such a big deal, but for a lot of girls and boys, having a character like that front and center in a game can be life-changing. There's no one right or wrong way to make female characters in games. Bayonet is one of my all-time favorite games and that character couldn't be less like Aqua. But in the current game landscape, Aqua's character is unique and refreshing, and I think a lot of people who play Breath by Sleep come out appreciating that, and I hope that she can serve as a good example for future characters as well. So that's Aqua, Keyblade Master and General Badass. It's going to be a long, long time before we see her again, but one thing is for sure, her story is not over yet. Thanks for watching Storytime. If you'd like to see more, you can subscribe, or you can follow me on Twitter or Tumblr to get updates when new videos come out. See you soon!